Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm back at Horton Waters, pretty little farm CL campsite near Newark in Nottinghamshire. And what have I got? Well, SMC Motorhomes just down the road have supplied me with the latest 2023 model from Vinesburg. It's the Cara Compact MB640 MEG Edition Pepper. Wow, that's quite a name, isn't it? Let's just stick with Edition Pepper, shall we? But the important bit is that MB, Mercedes-Benz, because for the first time, you can now get a Pepper Edition or Edition Pepper on a Merc chassis. Now, there's no shortage of Mercedes-based motorhomes on the market these days. The Sprinter has grown and grown in popularity as a chassis for motorhomes. Part of the reason for that is delays and lack of availability of the Fiat Ducato, and manufacturers have been looking to alternative chassis, not just the Merc, but the MAN, Volkswagen Crafter, Ford Transit, of course. But the Merc, of course, carries that three-pointed star. Now, the downside of that three-pointed star has always been cost. So Mercedes-based motorhomes have traditionally been big and expensive. Not anymore. How much for this edition Pepper? Well, if you go for the standard model, you can actually buy one for just under 70 grand. Now, this one's got a few extras on it, as I'll explain later on, and that is for a 150 horsepower manual gearbox version. Most people will probably want an automatic when they're buying a Merc. Nevertheless, 70 grand for a Mercedes coach built from Germany. Remember that uh, Weinsberg is part of the Knaus Tabert group, so a big respected German brand. Well, it does seem like rather good value, doesn't it? But then the Pepper Edition has always looked good value because this is one of Germany's top selling motorhomes, or rather its Fiat equivalent has been for, for several seasons now. And that's because Weinsberg put a lot of kit in this vehicle as standard. That four meter two lay rollout awning, that's standard. As is the Oyster satellite dish on the roof and the 16 inch Mercedes-Benz alloy wheels, all standard. And there's plenty more, as we'll see when we go inside. From Mercedes, it's a three and a half ton front wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter. Now you can upgrade that to 4.2 tons if you need to, but the important thing is that you can drive this motorhome on a standard car license. That's quite unusual for a Merc. It is a little larger than the Fiat based Pepper Edition, but not dramatically so. 2.3 meters wide is fairly typical for a coach-built motorhome, and the length is just under seven meters at 6.92 meters. So quite a maneuverable size on the road. Construction, well, it's got a GRP roof to mitigate against hailstone damage. Sides are smooth aluminium, but importantly, the skirts are aluminium, not plastic, so much more durable. It's quite a handsome looking beast too, I think. Look at these graphics, which are sort of coppery in this light, but seem to turn more orange uh, in brighter sunlight. They're a traditional sort of pepper edition touch. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying edition pepper and then pepper edition, but hey, it's all the same thing. Anyway, back to the motorhome. And well, let's take, some, take a look at some of the details. Before I go into detail, I should just add that there's a 10 year water ingress warranty on the body. Now the habitation door, of course, being Continental van, is on the Continental side. And this is an upgrade. This is the premium door. You get a wide door as standard, but this premium door comes with a window, this big chunky grab handle door, which is rather nice. Little Vinesburg shopping bag, which is rather neat touch, I like that. And a little holder for your brolly. That's a £604 option if you want the premium door. And strangely, they also charge you extra for the electric step. That's another £502. However, there aren't too many options fitted on this particular vehicle. And not too many options for you to consider. Windows 
are the sort of caravan style ones that sit proud of the body. And that's one of the few signs that this isn't a really, really expensive van. And then moving back, we've got the gas locker. And it's nice to see that the cylinders stand side by side so that they're much easier to swap over when one runs out. Oh, about time too. I asked for a pay rise and they locked me in here with just a packet of crisps. Anyway, big garage, as, you, as you'd probably expect in a German van. Width at the floor level, 860 millimetres. Maximum headroom, 1.24 metres. So a really good size garage. And you should be able to use it. Maximum weight in here, 250 kilos. Now, beyond that, if you order this as a standard three and a half ton motorhome in standard spec, payload is 465 kilos. Not bad. This one, as I said at the outset, has got a few options on it. So it goes down to 421 kilos, but still pretty reasonable payload for a two person, three and a half ton motorhome. And the garage itself, You've got a light at either end. You've got a main socket in this little corner where there's a shelved area. Over on that side, you've got your 75 amp hour leisure battery with plenty of room to upgrade that and fit a second battery alongside if you want to do a bit of off-grid camping. So really useful space. The only thing I don't like or the only thing to criticize is that you just get two tie down hooks and the rail that they attach to doesn't go the full width of the van, it's just in these two sections. Otherwise, it's a really good garage. Hmm. And these crisps, well, I've made them last days. Two point locking on the garage doors and these nice solid handles too. And then round the back, it is quite neatly styled and you get another three pointed star to remind you that you did pay that bit extra. Reversing camera standard two. And then moving down the side again, these orangey, coppery graphics that they're bold, but they oh, rather like them. But this is the key feature down the near side, what Weinsberg calls the easy travel box. Now in here, fully winterized, of course, you've got your fresh water tank. Nice for filling and for maintenance as well. 95 litres capacity. Your mains hookup goes up through a little trap door in the floor, so no flap on the outside and no breach of your uh, winterization in the, in the side walls. Your waste and fresh dump valves are in there as well, and the uh, boiler dump valve as well in there. But the, the waste tank, the gray tank, is under slung. It's heated and insulated, but it's only 65 liters capacity, so you will be making more regular trips to the grey water emptying point. So far, it's quite hard to see why this isn't a rather more expensive motorhome, apart from the fact that your Merck central locking only does the cab doors and not this habitation door. Let's see if that impression changes when we go inside. In fact, when you come in, first impressions are very good. It feels like a nice high quality German motorhome. Typical layout, half to net lounge, single beds at the back, but all very nicely appointed. And some great little details too. Co-hooks by the door. Somewhere to put your keys as you come in, little shelf up here. Your phone can sit up there as well, I suppose. And then the control panel. Well, it all looks very simple, but it does more than just tell you your water levels and battery condition, that sort of thing. You can actually control your heating and boiler from there as well. So you haven't got to have a separate control panel for those. Then, well, the layout is no surprise, but it does feel very light and airy. You've got a big opening over cab sunroof and a big hecky over the lounge as well. Although that is the cheaper push-up type rather than the windy handle one. Cab seats spin round easily and they're half faux leather. Malabar, this, uh, this trim's called, and I quite like it. It's, yeah, it's inoffensive, quite automotive actually. You've got Remis blinds around the cab and neck curtains on the side window too. 
The artificial lighting is good too, with these down lighters in the ceiling and below the top cupboards. But what I really like is the ambient lighting around these eye level lockers. That looks really nice. And you've got this copper detailing too, which matches the graphics on the outside. This half done it bench, which is a little bit firm, I have to say, um, is not set at 90 degrees to the wall. It's angled slightly away from that right angle to give you easier access in and out of the table. And it does actually seem to work. It's a, a little detail, but it does, yeah, it does seem to be an improvement table itself is wall mounted and you've got the usual swing out leaf although that's still a bit of a stretch from the driver's seat if you're actually dining It'd be fine for drinks and snacks but just that little bit far away if you're actually eating a full meal what you will want to sit in those two cab seats for is to watch the telly and that 24 inch screen is again a standard feature remember you've got the oyster satellite dish on the roof also part of the standard spec is what I think they call the cosy home package, which gives you these two scatter cushions, two matching pillows for the rear bedroom, a couple of blankets for the bed at the back as well, this runner for the table. Yeah, it all gives you a little bit of softness to the, to the decor and saves you going out to home base and buying some, some cushions. It does just makes the van feel a bit more cosy and homely. You've got these automotive style rear head restraints for back seat passengers and of course you've got four travel seats in this van although it's only a two berth for sleeping. If you want more than that there is a suite version uh, which has a drop down bed over the lounge area and that has a bit of a domed roof. It's a little bit more expensive, not dramatically so, but that is an option if you do need four berths. Back to this particular one, and under your half donette seat is your boiler. It's a Truma Combi 6E, so gas and electric, and the more powerful 6 kilowatt heater. When it comes to the galley, there are no great surprises, but actually Weinsberg have done a pretty good job in what is a fairly typical continental layout of this type. For a start, you've got a reasonable sort of triangle of worktop between the hob and the sink. The hob has got three burners, and then alongside is a very sturdy, very Germanic worktop flap. Neat too is the fact you've got a three pin socket right next to that. So just be careful if there's anything in use, like a kettle particularly, if you're coming going through the door, but that is pr quite practical to have say a coffee machine on there and the main socket. It's certainly more practical than this other main socket, which not only is over the sink, but you'd need quite a long lead for anything to reach from there to this bit of worktop here. Now, down below counter level where you've got this nice lighting for a start and then a supersized cutlery and utensil drawer that soft closes. Under that, you've got the Thetford duplex oven and grill. Now that is an option, 696 pounds if you want that, but it's good to have, warm up those pizzas or cook a roast dinner, whatever you feel like, or maybe just do some toast in the morning. But although it's a bit close to the floor, it is much, much better than having one up in the sky as we often see. I've never fancied balancing a roast dinner on my head myself. Next to the oven, I would like to have seen more drawers, but you've got a good size cupboard with shelves instead. You've got your gas taps in there. And it's nice to see that all the wiring and plumbing does seem to be very neatly installed in this van. Then alongside, typically continental, you've got a nice big fridge. It's 142 litres, this Thetford fridge. And it's of course automatic energy selection, so you don't have to worry about switching from 12 volt to gas or whatever. So that's your kitchen. Won't suit everybody, but it does quite a good job in this relatively compact space. Yes, it's me sitting on the loo again. This time, a Dometic cassette toilet, which is definitely the superior one of the two. And I wanted to show you that this space 
is well used too. It's not a big washroom, but it does use the space very well. For a start, this wash basin slides into the shower area when you need to use the loo. Now, if you're sitting on the loo, this is perhaps something you need to try for size because the shoulder room between the basin and the wall isn't the greatest. It's fine for me, but you might want to try it for size. Equally, when you do slide the basin back over the loo, well, the shower, you don't need any clingy curtains. It's all folding screens. And I found this perfectly adequate for me. Better still, you've got two drain holes in the shower, so if you're parked on a slight slope, that shouldn't be an issue. You've got somewhere for your shampoo and so on. Above is a drying rail for any towels or wet clothes, but it's not the biggest cubicle. Perfectly adequate, I reckon. But again, you might want to try it for size. You just go up a couple of steps from the living area into the bedroom. And here it's the classic, very popular German layout of twin single beds over the garage. They're good sized beds, 1.98 meters long by 0.82 or 820 millimeters wide. That's six foot six by two foot eight. Now it's quite an attractive looking bedroom. You've got this backlit headboard, you've got these reading lights. I like these elasticated pockets at the side. They're useful extra storage space and things won't come flying out as soon as you go round a roundabout. Ventilation, well you've got a small roof vent above and one opening window. No window on this side. Well, I suppose they did have to save a few pennies somewhere to get that price down, didn't they? And then, it's the usual single bed bugbear. Well, you've got these top lockers that really rather spoil sitting up in bed, unless you take about 300 pillows with you, but that is the same with so many models of this type. Now, of course, it's also possible to convert this bedroom into a double bed. And that is very easy because you've got this slide out slatted base with the ladder attached to it. When you get to the end of the run, as you just bolt it in place so that it doesn't slide back. And then there is simply one infill cushion goes on top. Of course, access isn't quite as easy now. <coughs> But if you want to sleep transversely in a huge double bed, well, it's 2.03 meters long by 1.61 meters wide. That's six foot eight across the width of the van by a bed width of five foot three and a half. But you've still got lockers in the way to stop you sitting up in bed. Although I should have perhaps pointed out one last detail. You've got a main socket and a USB up in that top corner cupboard over that side of the bed. And one final detail, two more coat hooks on the bathroom wall. So that's the bedroom. And before we move on, there's a large shelved locker under the offside bed and a good sized wardrobe, although not with a great deal of hanging depth, under the near side bed. Should also say that one little economy throughout the motorhome is the cheaper type of blinds on the windows, so they do let a little bit of light in at the bottom. Now, just before we take this uh, van for a test drive, I want to tell you about the two most expensive options fitted. Firstly, there's the 170 horsepower engine with nine speed automatic gearbox rather than the standard 150 horsepower and six speed manual. That's £3,469. On top of that, we've got what they call the Hot Pepper package, which gives you traffic sign assist, so speed limits and so on come up on your instrument cluster. It's got active distance alert Distronic. 
Now that in Mercedes-Benz speak is adaptive cruise control. It's standard cruise control as standard, but the adaptive cruise control comes as part of this package. The electric parking brake down here, well, that's a boon because it doesn't, you haven't then haven't got a manual parking brake getting in the way of swiveling the seats. You've got the MBUX display here with the 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen, and it gives you three years um, free updates on the sat nav as well. And the reversing camera displays through this screen as well. All those features in the Hot Pepper package would normally cost £3,589, but the special pack price is £3,060. Now that brings the total for this particular van to £77,891. Still well under 80 grand, well under 80 grand for a German quality Mercedes low profile motorhome. Let's go for a drive. And when we do, of course, remember this is a Merc, so foot on the brake, press the button to start, and of course the little switch down here for the parking brake. Engage drive, and off we go. Now, first thing I should say perhaps when we're out on the road is that this is the new two litre Mercedes engine, um, which does seem that little bit more refined than the old 2.1 litre unit. 170 horsepower, well, it does seem very lively for a coach built motorhome, certainly up there with 180 horsepower Fiat's. Nine speed automatic gearbox is super smooth and the ride quality is excellent. It's not got that crashy feel that uh, Fiat Ducato motorhomes tend to have on a road like this, which is, well, <laughs> almost third world in its road surface. But not only is this motorhome quiet in terms of engine refinement, it is super, super, super quiet in terms of habitation noise. There really isn't any. There's a very, very slight chatter from this, um, this Remis blind on the cab door. It just needs a little bit of adjustment or something. But the rest of it is silent. There is no clattering furniture. Oh God, why can't they all be like this? And the Merc, well, is just a nice thing to drive. It feels like a really good quality vehicle. You've got this lovely sat-nav display. Everything about it is just, it's just how motorhomes should be. So my final verdict on this Weinsberg edition Pepper. Well, <clears throat> we've established that it drives really, really well. The build quality is excellent too and it's great value for money. I know 78 grand in round figures is a lot of, lot of cash to find, but for a Mercedes-based motorhome in 2023, you'll be hard pushed to better a deal like that. My advice, if you like the Merc chassis and you want a single bed layout motorhome that isn't too big on the road, get your name down for one of these pretty quick while they're still around. I hope you enjoyed our latest video and thank you to those that have already subscribed to the channel. Please don't forget to like this video and there'll be plenty more coming along soon.